In order to set the uh, camera up, you can use the following diagram. You connect the uh, 12 volt power supply and the Ethernet cable as shown in this photo and the side photo in the next picture. To edit the camera software settings, head into Settings, Configuration Dialogs, Camera. Here we can select the camera interface, either we have no camera or an IP camera. And if we have an IP camera, then we have to set an IP initialization lane. The line will always start with RTSP colon double slash. And by default, the address will be 182.168.080 for our camera with a case and 81 for our camera without a case. The pattern size should be set to be larger than the marker itself, anywhere from 50 to 70% larger. And that's done to have some white space around the marker. Our region of interest coefficient for the uh, pixel to length ratio and our camera shift will all be set automatically on the newest software versions when using the calibrate button in the camera tab. We typically assign tool 10 to camera by default and we can also assign the camera offset from the working tool in the X and Y plane and our tool length in the Z plane. The ignore decoder error flag is typically set to off unless the camera is specifically having a lot of artifacts or noise when sending the information over to the computer. Our pattern match level is the level of parity between the reference marker that we will be taking a photo of and the other markers that it will be comparing it to. Lower numbers mean that you need more parity, higher numbers mean less, less parity. So effectively, if you set this number to zero, you are effectively telling the program that every new marker should look exactly like the old marker to be registered, which is typically not going to happen because you're going to have some sort of light variation, material variation, some very slight differences. So it's advised to set this to some value around uh, anywhere from 40 to 100, depending on your material. If you set this number too high, let's say to 500, then you risk running into a lot of false positives when uh, trying to recognize the marker. So that's not recommended either. Here you will have a graph which will show the uh, match level or the parity level between what's expected and what's actually shown on the screen. And uh, last, you have uh, the image sensor correction, and that's used when uh, a camera outputs its image in, a, um, in an aspect ratio that's different from the default. And uh, if that's the case, then you will see the circular marker either uh, shifted or um, stretched or compressed in some way. And uh, then you can set the flag to be on, but it's typically off by default. For the uh, calibration process, we can head into our uh, settings, go into the camera tab, and click on the uh, set a new pattern button. This will record a photo of the marker that you see on the screen to use as a reference. After that, you can press the start calibration button. And here you can see that the machine is now moving automatically. It will move in the positive x, positive y, negative x, and negative y direction until it cannot see the marker. And that's done in order to uh, select the uh, pixel to length coefficient. And after the uh, last movement in the negative y direction has completed, 
the calibration will also be complete. In this tutorial, we'll be using Inkscape, which is a free open source Linux application to create our DXF file. I've already opened Inkscape and uh, we'll be drawing some shapes that we want to cut out. Gonna reposition them, and after I've repositioned them, I will add a layer. And this layer will be called camera. In this layer, we will add circular markers. And I'll set their diameter to six. This will be six millimeter diameter circular markers. And I'm just going to copy it and uh, set the markers around on the outside of the shapes that I want to cut out. Note here how every marker is in the camera layer while the stars are in layer 1. Now that we've positioned everything properly, we can save as, and we will save this file as a .dxf file, as a .dxf file. We'll give our file a name. Once we're saving the file, it's important to select the LW Polyline option instead of the RoboMaster for um, YCNC to properly recognize the lines being drawn in the DXF file. At this point, we can use our DXF file to perform distortion correction. We can load our DXF file that we have saved previously. Note how we have two layers. We have a knife in layer one, which we will set to tool number two. And we'll have a camera. Which we will set as tool number 10. load that. And here we have the uh, file on the screen. I have already printed out a file. I have printed out a page with the D DXF image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it in order for the uh, program to correct the g-code using our markers that we've created previously. So we press play, and the uh, machine will start moving towards the first marker, or the location where it ex expects the first marker to be. When it doesn't find it, it starts to move around until it locates it and positions itself properly. Then it goes on to the second marker and repeats the same process there. This is our marker number three now.
and this is our last marker that the program will correct for. As you can see, the G code has been corrected. It has been tilted somewhat. And now the program, the actual program, will begin to run. And we're just going to let it run to see if it's corrected itself properly. And here it is. Since our camera has a zero tool offset, uh, it's now going directly over the line. So we can see that it's precisely at exactly the same location as we expect it to be. And here we're just running through our G-code. And we're now on our last star. And there we are, the program is complete.